welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to be making tzatziki sauce, which is a traditional Greek recipe. And I got this particular recipe from the food blog, The Wonderlust Kitchen. And apparently the person who runs this blog learned this recipe while taking a cooking class in Greece. So hopefully it should be a good tzatziki sauce recipe. So we're going to need all the ingredients that I showed you at the beginning. We're going to start with the cucumber. It calls for half of the cucumber, unpeeled, and we're going to grate it using this grater here. And I also bought some extra cucumbers um, that we're going to use to serve with the sauce once it's done. But I'm only going to do half the recipe today, and then the second half of the video is going to be the next day because she recommends that you take your grated cucumber and that you drain it overnight in a sieve so that all the liquid or as much as possible is drained out of your grated cucumber. And she also recommends that when you take your Greek yogurt and you mix it together with your garlic and your oil and your salt, that you leave that sitting overnight to let the garlic flavor really get into it. So we're gonna, th those are the two things we're going to do today. Before we do that though, we have some exciting kitchen news. So you can see, no, I did not get angry and take a sledgehammer to the kitchen. We're actually gonna be getting a new stove. So up here is gonna be a microwave. It's gonna be an overhead type microwave. And then down here is gonna be our new stove. It's actually right across from the sink is where we're getting the new stove and microwave. All right, this is a brand new grater, so I'm hoping this works. Seems to be working pretty good. So I'm getting the shredded cucumber here and here, you can see. So seems to be good so far. Obviously, you just want to be really careful that you're not going to grate your fingers in here. So I'm just being careful to hold my hand back away from it. I'm not really sure what you do once you get down to the last little bit where you can't hold it anymore. <laughs> So um, I guess you just eat that a little bit because there's no way to grate it down that far without grating your finger. This is kind of um, the cheapo option, but actually you can get a thing called a mandolin, which um, actually has like a little holder that you stick your vegetable in and then you just run it back and forth over the blade. And that is a good option for protecting your hand more. Um, while also being able to grate it down pretty far. Alright, that's as far as I feel safe going. So I'm just going to slice off the blossom end there uh, and then eat this last little bit. Okay, I'm just using the back side of the knife, the non sharp side, to scrape off as much of this as I can so I don't waste any. All right, we're done with this for now. So I'm gonna rinse it. I am just gonna rinse it. I really don't think that, usually when I'm using a knife or some other tool that's only touched a vegetable or fruit, no other ingredients, I find that it's clean if you just rinse it. There's no real need to use soap unless you've got something you know, greasy or oily or gummy or gooey. But just fruits and vegetables. Um, you can really save yourself some time and just rinse it with water. All right, so I have this dish that I found fits my strainer pretty well. There's space down here for the liquid to drain off. And I'm gonna put the grated cucumber in the top here. So I'm gonna use, again, the back side of my knife because I don't want to, um, I don't want to make the cutting part dull by scraping it against things. So I'm gonna use the back part to scrape off the cucumber. And I'm just gonna make sure that this is sort of spread out in the bottom of the colander or strainer, whatever you wanna call it. They did recommend using a, a sieve, which if you don't know what a sieve is, it's the same idea as this, only it's made out of fine wires that are woven together into a little cup shape. And then you just put your stuff in there and it drains through. Um, I couldn't find one of those, so I'm using this instead. I think it will be fine because 
You can see already the juice is starting to strain out. And none of my little cucumber pieces are small enough that they're going to go through these holes. So it will still work just fine for this purpose. And finally, I'm going to cover over the top of this with some plastic wrap so that my cucumber doesn't get all dried out. Usually at home, I like to use those little reusable plastic thingies that look kind of like a shower cap. Um, so I would recommend that, but we don't have any, any of those here in the library kitchen. So I'm just going to use this plastic wrap. The uh, ones that I like to use at home are nice because you can just wash and reuse them instead of wasting all this plastic all the time. Okay, and we'll put this in the refrigerator. Once again, all this had on it was a raw cucumber, so I'm just going to rinse it with water. I'm trying not to get it directly in the water because I don't want it to get totally soaked. I'm just going to use my hand and push the cucumber bits off. Alright, now I'm going to get out this Itsy Bitsy cutting board because the next step is to mince two cloves of garlic. So this whole thing that I'm holding here this is one head of garlic or one bulb, you might hear it called. And then inside of it are the individual cloves. <laughs> okay. So you don't want to use like two of these. That would be way too much. So just in case you're not familiar with garlic, I just wanted to tell you that. All right. So inside here, you can see all the individual cloves are clustered in there. And we only need two cloves. Alright, so there's my two cloves right there. This can make good compost. Um, if you have a compost bin. We don't have one here. We were going to get one actually, but we couldn't find one that locked. And we were kind of afraid to have one that didn't lock. Just, um sitting out there in the library's backyard because, I don't know, people are weird. Someone might decide to throw cigarette butts in it or something. So, we never ended up getting one. But if you do have a compost heap at home, <clears throat> those wrappers would make great compost. Alright, um, I don't really want this serrated knife for that. I'm going to switch over to the regular knife. So this one was a serrated knife, meaning that it's got these little, like, sharp teeth. But we don't really need that kind, just for garlic. Sorry, I forgot to film this part up close, but what I did was I just sliced off the rough end of the clove. So I'll show you on this one that, that I'm not going to cut. But you can see it comes with a rough end where it was attached and then the top end here. So I'm, I sliced off this rough end here, and sometimes you can even slice off a bit of this top end to make it easier to peel. So now it looks like this. And that makes it a lot easier to kind of get your fingernail in there around the top and just peel off the skin. Okay, so now that's what we want. So now I'm going to mince the garlic, which means just cut it very, very fine. Alright, I think that's a better view now. So I'm cutting it very, very finely into slices first. And then it gets down to a little bit, I just lay it down and then try to cut it without my finger being in the way. So now this one. You can see I'm just going to cut, hold it on the side where it's higher, or it's like higher like a mountain, and cut on the side where it's lower. So that way, if I happen to slip, it's less likely I'm going to slip up, upwards towards my hand. It's more likely it's going to slip downwards towards the cutting board. And then once it gets too small to hold safely, I'm going to turn it on its side, try to find the side that looks higher and hold that side, and keep cutting it like that until it gets too tiny. Alright, so now we have to mince this even finer. So I'm going to take the knife and 
actually this works a little bit better with a bigger knife. So just take the knife and you can actually just rock the knife, hold it with one hand on this end, see, and you can just rock the knife over it as a way of cutting it up really fine without having to keep lifting up the whole knife over and over. And every once in a while I'm just um, scraping it off but I'm not running my hand along lengthwise because that's obviously a really good way to cut yourself. I'm only pushing it widthwise like this from top to bottom to push off those bits so that way you don't cut yourself. Alright so these bits are getting pretty fine. Oops. So I'm going to set them aside. For this, I am going to use a little bit of a paper towel to rub it, just because um, the garlic tends to kind of stick on there. And I am even going to just do a tiny dot of soap, just because uh, garlic, as you know, has a strong smell. So maybe if I cut up an apple or something with this knife later, I might not want that to smell like garlic or taste like garlic. All right, so I'm going to save this little dude for later. Put him over there. This is the dish where we're going to be mixing together the yogurt with the oil and the salt. So it's calling for one and a half cups of plain, full fat Greek yogurt. So the whole milk variety. We want all that yummy fatness in there to make us have a good creamy dip. And did you know that whole milk is actually only... Um, I don't know about the yogurt because yogurt's more concentrated, I guess. But in, the, in its whole milk form, it is only 3% um, fat. So it's still 97% fat free, even if you're buying whole milk. Alright, so I'm going to not waste any. Okay. Make great grandma proud. Don't waste it. Scrape it off. So now this is not rocket science, so if it's not exactly even, you know, it doesn't matter that much for something like this. You're just making some dip. So um, if you want to take a knife or spatula, flat knife or spatula, and scrape off your top, um, go ahead. But I'm not really going to bother. I'm just going to eyeball it. That was about a cup. It was a good sized cup. Maybe slightly more than a cup. But um, when you're baking, you really need to be careful with your measurements because that's actually a chemical reaction that's happening. And if you mess it up, you know, your cake might turn out flat or something. But when you're just cooking, cooking is a little less precise than baking. So I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not even going to get out my half cup measure. I'm just going to take this full cup measure and eyeball it so it looks like it's about half full. Maybe a little less since I overfilled that other cup. Now we're going to add our garlic. Lovely little minced garlic here. And now we're going to add our olive oil. And this is extra virgin olive oil. Uh, that's just the best kind for cooking. So here's my tablespoon. You can tell it's a tablespoon because it says TBS. And this is a teaspoon. It just says TSP. So that's a teaspoon. Um, other times you can tell the difference because um, the teaspoon will be lowercase and the tablespoon will be uppercase. In this case, you they've made them both uppercase. But the difference is this one has a B in it. So this is the tablespoon and you can see it's much bigger. So you want to make sure you get the right one. So now I'm going to take my little thingy dealer that was at the top of the olive oil jar and cut that so we don't strangle any wildlife. Okay, next calling for a half teaspoon of salt. Alright, I'm just going to keep 
mixing till I don't see any more olive oil separating out of it. Alright, it looks like it's completely combined now. So what we do is we refrigerate this overnight to let the flavors really blend together. You could use it right away, but the, um, the recipe author recommends doing this overnight to get the best flavor. I'm going to see what it tastes like now by licking this spoon though. Mm. Mm. It's good right now. I'm sure it'll be even better tomorrow though. Alright, that's it for now and we'll be right back. Um, tomorrow for me in just a couple of seconds for you to finish this recipe. Okay, I'm back because I forgot one ingredient. So I'm just going to add that real quickly now and then stir this again. So we need one tablespoon of white vinegar. Alright, I'm going to stir that in well and refrigerate it and we'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to the kitchen and it's the next day. I'm going to continue with this tiki sauce. So basically, it only involves slicing up the cucumbers and getting the pita bread out on the plate to serve to everybody. And finally, we're going to take our yogurt mixture here, add the cucumber grapes that we've been draining overnight, and finally, the dill. So it calls for one tablespoon of minced fresh dill. Um, if you don't have fresh, you can use dried, but if you use dried, you have to use less and you use one teaspoon instead of one tablespoon. So I'm gonna use the dried dill. All right, let's go. Okay, normally I would use the fresh dill from my garden, but since I'm here at the library, I am gonna just use the dried dill. By the way, dill is really easy to grow. If you ever feel like growing it, um, super easy you just sow the seeds early in spring and another fun thing about it is it's actually a host plant for the uh, tiger swallowtail butterfly so you can attract really pretty butterflies eh. what should i do slices or sticks i don't know i think slices are prettier though i mean that's getting kind of small so i'm just gonna do little ones like this so i don't risk getting cut. Okay, and then when it starts to get towards the middle of the cucumber, so this side is higher than this side, and I want to cut, remember, on the lower side so that if my knife slips, it's more likely to slip this way towards the cutting board rather than that way towards my hand because my hand is going to be perched on the higher part of the vegetable. And they also recommend that you kind of curve your fingers like that so that if you do slip towards yourself, you're more likely to just bump into your knuckles rather than like accidentally slice something important. Alright, so it doesn't look like a whole lot of juice really came out of that. I don't know if more was supposed to come out. I'm just going to take my spoon and press. See, just press it against the side of the strainer and just see if I can get any more juices to come out. Hmm, that's looking really good. It smells good too. So I think I think I did get enough of the liquid out of the cucumber. It doesn't seem like it's too liquidy. Like the only other time that I tried to make tzatziki sauce, it turned out too liquidy. So definitely straining it overnight is a good thing to do. All right, I'm gonna take this little bit here and just taste it. Remember, no double dipping. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it in this little dish to serve it. And then I'm going to have my cucumbers on my tray and then how should I arrange the pitas? Maybe I should take some of the pitas and like cut them in wedges like a pizza. Because I think that would look prettier to serve it that way. Alright, so I just 
scored it with a knife to make it easier so I can pull it apart on a straight line. So I hope you enjoyed spending some time in the kitchen today and have a great week and we'll see you again next time. Bye!